a gift. Each has a power. Each has a purpose. And together, they will face their greatest adventure. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The movie. The power is on. Oh yeah, the nostalgia isn't just on, it's going turbo. Eh? Eh? Yeah, okay. Hey everyone, I'm SpammerD, and welcome back to our Power Rangers The Movie Comparison Review. This is part 2 of the video where we look at the console versions of the game. So if you missed part 1 where we compared the handhelds, go check that out. That is, if you don't want it spoiled for you. Because it's gonna come up, and we are going to reference it quite a bit. So yeah. Fair warning. Alright, everyone good? All caught up? Well, if you are, then it's pretty obvious what you're thinking now. Spammer D. What did you mean when you said, if you actually consider both of them to be Power Rangers games? Well, the answer is quite simple. I don't. If you'll recall, with the handheld games, I showed you that both games were loosely based on the movie. But with their console counterparts, well, one of these games clearly isn't based on the movie at all. Hell, it's barely based on Power Rangers at all. And I have a theory on that. And that's right, get your tin hats at the ready, because it's once again time for another Spammer D Conspiracy. Submitted for your approval, two games, one title. One dark secret. A game with a sole purpose of getting your parents cold, hard cash. So, aside from just comparing which of these two games is better, what I'm also putting on the table here today is that neither of these two titles were ever intended to be based on the movie. As always, I don't have any confirmation of this, so I'll let you decide for yourself. I've heard the phrase that looks can be deceiving. I'm sure that when you've tried it, you all will be believing. Deceiving is right. Both of these games start with a strong opening hand with their opening title sequence. The Sega game is the stronger of our two titles as far as actually being based on the movie. It starts with a story scroll that is literally lifted right from the opening of the movie, while one of the movie poster images appears in the background, while the music builds. And then BOOM! Lightning strikes and we've got our title screen. All while that Power Ranger theme rocks our ears out in the background. Good stuff. The SNES version on the other hand skips the title scroll on the build up, but it too opens with a Thunderbolt and that epic Ranger theme. But wait a minute. What's this? It's here that we get our first major clue that something is seriously wrong here. Just take a look. Featuring Ivan Ooze? Featuring Ivan Ooze? Are you serious? He's only the main villain of the movie. It's like, gee, I'd hope he'd be in the game. Seriously, saying this would be like saying Batman, the Dark Knight, featuring the Joker. It's like, yeah, come on. So, obviously, I'm a bit worried right out the gate, because here is where everything splits. Jumping back to Sega, we can immediately see that it's an arcade style beat em up, similar to games like Streets of Rage and Final Fight. And the first level has us brawling against the Oozmen, just like the first major fight of the movie. Good stuff. Afterwards, Ooze himself shows up to blast us, which is to be followed up by a cutscene, which is admittedly pretty ugly. Everything looks really blown out. But what's worse is that these scenes are literally nothing more than a giant plot dump of the entire movie. It shows them going to another planet, the ninja powers, them getting their powers back, and then returning to Earth. It's like, what? Come on! That is, no joke, cutting out the entire middle act of the movie. Why? I wanted to play that part! Remember the fight with the Tangus? The rock guys? 
I mean, the cutscenes even mention them! So what? Is all that's left in the movie the final battle? Are we right at the end, right after the first level? Well, no. The second level has us fighting the Oozmen again, but this time at night, which I remember seeing in the commercials as a kid and I thought a brawl at night was really cool. But what isn't cool is what happens next. The next cutscene is basically a flashback that the new Rangers have from when they first got their powers. The next three levels take place in this flashback of events from the second season of the show, complete with putties, Goldar, and a boss fight against three monsters at once that could have easily have been the four rock monsters. But it's here where the first part of my theory comes into play. This game, and possibly the Game Gear game too, probably started out as a second season Power Rangers game. I mean, think about it. There was already a successful Power Rangers game released on the Genesis and Game Gear already, and Power Rangers were nearing its peak of popularity. The White Ranger arrived, new Zords, and of course a new villain, Lord Zed. So it only makes sense to make another game. But I bet at some point mid-production, the movie was announced and they were told to just shop the game to make it look like it was based on the movie. So what did they do? Well, just add in some levels at the start and the end and call it a day. The final cutscene even works with my theory, as it shows Bulk and Skull saying word for word what they did at the end of the movie. But they're at the hangout that's only in the show. Funny, ain't it? The last two stages are Zord fights against Ooze and his mechs. And to the game's credit, the final battle is way more epic than the actual movie. Now, I won't spoil it here, but I'll put it at the end of the credits for those of you interested. So you'll just have to put up with my rambling through the credits, I guess. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's cool. Now, I don't even need to show off the actual level order to explain why the SNES game isn't a Power Rangers game. Because it should be pretty obvious. I mean, really, do you remember that episode where Rocky busted into an air carrier via a speedboat? Or how about that time Billy 1v1'd Ryu from Ninja Gaiden? That was awesome. Or how about that episode where Tommy fought against a giant brain in a jar after infiltrating a missile silo? Yeah, I know, that was one of my favorites as a kid too. And how could anyone forget that one time when Kimberly pimp slapped a tank? And it exploded. Holy crap, Power Rangers was the hype. It amazes me that any kid show could pull off all of that. So yeah. I think it's pretty clear that this game has nothing to do with the Power Rangers. My theory here is actually pretty similar to what it was on the Genesis. The guys at Nintendo said, hey, we need a Power Rangers the movie game too. Make it happen. But sir, we're almost finished with our new Commando game. You're looking at the small picture here. Just make some changes to make it look like the Power Rangers, and it'll be fine. But the game we're working on has nothing to do with Power Rangers. Oh, who cares? They're just kids! They'll never know the difference. You know, the sad part is, they were right. We didn't. I didn't. I was really dumb as a kid. Fortunately though, despite these design choices, both of these games are still really good. So shopped or not, they're worth taking a closer look at. Plus, we still gotta figure out which one is actually better. Now, unsurprisingly, the console versions do follow a few of the trends that the handheld set. For example, the Genesis version is, once again, the only one of the two to have actual Power Rangers music in it which of course helped set the mood for a Power Rangers beatdown. On top of that, it has a few voiceovers from the show too, though they're so compressed that it barely matters. But it's still a nice touch. The SNES version on the other hand, like the Game Boy, doesn't have any Power Ranger tunes, you know, aside from that opening theme. Instead, it has its own unique soundtrack, which is still pretty good. And just like how the Game Boy, NES, and Genesis all have their own distinct sound, this original track is so Super Nintendo. And like before, I have both SNES and Genesis tracks playing in the background with a little icon in the corner to tell you which is which. But all personal taste aside, like the handhelds, I really gotta say that the Genesis has the superior sound, as it's actually Power Rangers, 
you know, the thing we're here for. But rest assured, that's where the major similarities between the handheld comparison and the console comparisons end. As I'm sure we're all well aware, that huge difference in graphical performance between the Game Boy and the Game Gear does not exist here, ensuring a much more fair fight. A fight that definitely doesn't do Sega any favors. With the biggest problem being that there really isn't much to the graphics in this version. I already mentioned that the cutscenes look pretty poor. I mean, what the hell happened to their faces? Come on, Sega. I know you can do better than that. And even the in-game graphics are nothing special. Not bad, mind you, just not much to them. But it does have one major strength. The continuity. Once again, actually being a Power Rangers game works in Sega's favor, as the levels and characters actually look like how they're supposed to. I mean, just look at the Zords. Awesome. And let's compare Rangers, shall we? I think the Pink Ranger is the best example here. Which one of these looks like someone actually saw a Power Rangers before making the sprite? Now, which one of these looks like she's doing steroids? Yeah, I think you get it. But with that being said, the SNES graphics still look better. Every level, despite having nothing to do with the show or movie, still look great. The sprites are all large and crisp and nicely detailed. There's a lot going on, and it really takes advantage of the gameplay style to show off as much as it can. Even if that's some of the more absurd ideas, like over-exaggerating poor Billy here. Geez, somebody doesn't like nerds. Or how about, um, I don't know, these putties with rifles? Tell me, couldn't you see these guys being an enemy soldier in, oh, um, I don't know, a not Power Rangers game? But that aside, theming doesn't take away from the overall quality, which is well above the Genesis version. Though in the interest of fairness, I do have to mention that I did hit slowdown once or twice each time I played, but not enough to actually matter. The SNES graphics are still better. But like always, what matters most is how each game plays, and they're both really fun. And despite both being beat-em-ups, they're actually pretty different. As stated earlier, the Sega Genesis version is your traditional arcade style beat-em-up, like TMNT and Castle Crashers, and as such, plays like most of those games do. Each stage has you beating down hordes of enemies with kicks, punches, run attacks, and special moves. The Rangers actually have a pretty good repertoire of moves available to them for this type of game. Taking down all the enemies will bring you to the boss battles, where things get a slight change in formula where you actually get to play as the Zords, both from the second season of the show and the movie, a feature that is absent from the SNES version. But unfortunately, that's where the game's strengths really start to trickle off. As far as beat-em-ups are concerned, the Genesis version of the game is pretty lackluster. It's not bad, but it's missing a lot of depth. For example, despite the cool factor of being able to play as all six rangers, there's hardly any difference between them, and even some of their special moves are pretty similar. Really, they all play the same, unlike many other brawlers where you might have a light, medium, and heavy class of fighters. And really, even the Zords don't play all that different. And the same could be said for the enemies. Most beat-em-ups have a good variety of enemies to face off with, but Power Rangers only has two, Putties and Oozmen. Plus, there's a handful of very samey bosses, though I hardly count Galdar because he is a drag to fight. All he does is run away, and you have to fight him three times. <sighs> the only feature this game does add to the formula is a time limit. Because, yay, who doesn't love a time limit? And honestly, I think the time limit is probably your greatest enemy, especially on hard difficulty. When the timer hits zero, it drains your health. And let me tell you, it did more damage to me than the enemies ever could. Even when I got this game as a kid, me and my buddy opened it up and beat it in under an hour. It's pretty clear that this game was made for younger kids in mind, and as such, it is pretty easy. The SNES version, on the other hand, is not. I know me and that same friend could not beat this one as kids. This version of the game is a side-scroller platformer beat-em-up, just like its predecessor and Game Boy counterpart. 
but unlike those games, it has a bit of a twist. In most side-scrollers of this nature, you're usually stuck on one plane of movement. Think Mario or Sonic. But in Power Rangers, you actually have two that you can switch between at any time when you press the shoulder buttons. This actually makes it more similar to games like Guardian Heroes and Code of Princess, putting it in a very small pool of games that share this style. And how the game utilizes this feature is what really makes it work. Throughout most of the game, you're able to switch between each path at will, allowing you to choose which obstacles you want to tackle, avoid enemies you don't want to face, grab power-ups, and is also necessary in order to avoid stage hazards. Its design is woven in beautifully for a side-scroller experience rarely seen. Unfortunately, the rest of the game's decisions don't make nearly as much sense, and in fact, most of its flaws are pretty on point with the Game Boy version. Except, kinda worse. Now one of the more interesting flaws that is somewhat debatable is the stiffness. When you go up to an enemy and attack, your character stops walking, requiring you to position yourself properly. And that's important for survival as the rangers suffer from enemies with the molten touch. Kinda like Mario. Just walking into them hurts you. So it would seem like that stopping is a good thing. And the way this crouching putty works is actually based around that mechanic, so it is a design choice. It just kind of feels awkward, especially compared to the smooth controls of the Genesis Rangers. I feel that this problem could have been addressed with a dash mechanic. And there is one, sort of, but that's where our major complaint comes in, the energy bar. The energy bar in this game works just like it does in the Game Boy game. You collect lightning bolts to fill your gauge, and once it's filled, you can morph. Which, as before, lends a bit of strategy to the game. Since morphing restores your health, and you only get 5 hits, saving your energy until you need a health jump is a sensible strategy. Except, it's more of a problem in this game. First off, that dash mechanic I mentioned earlier? Well, that's actually the special attack, which, as you probably guessed, uses energy. And a good amount of it too. So if you want to morph, you can't use your special. Not to mention, when playing co-op, you have to share collecting energy, limiting you even further. Now I bet a lot of you are probably thinking, well, just don't use the specials and save up to morph. Which makes sense, and I did do. Except, morphing kinda sucks. Sure, when morphed you do more damage, but the rangers lose all individuality when it happens. Just like with the Sega game, each level lets you pick a ranger to play as. And individual specials aside, each ranger still plays a bit differently. Adam, for example, gets a jump kick, which makes hitting those crouched enemies without stopping easier. Or how about Aisha's crouch attack, which hits both directions. All these nuances are lost after they morph, and then they all play exactly the same. So it's kind of more fun to stay as the civilians. But even if you do, the game forces you to morph at the bosses. Which brings up another power bar problem. Again, just like the Game Boy, it can be worth it to save up power after being morphed so you can unleash a super move on the boss. These ones look way cooler by the way. But it's kind of worse than how the Game Boy version does it. First, unlike the civilians, no normal specials. Like, what? And second, as soon as the bar hits max, it starts to drop. No activation options. Though you do hit with your weapon for a while for more damage. But still, tactics be damned. Well, to an extent. Every boss does require some use of tactics in order to beat them without dying. As compared to the Sega version, which boils down to just run around and hit them a lot. Which really could be the driving factor between which game you think is better. Because at the end of the day, both of these games are great Power Ranger games. They both have their strengths and flaws, and compared to their fellow Power Ranger titles, Power Rangers the movie on Sega Genesis is clearly the greatest of the Power Ranger titles. It follows the story of both the second season and the movie, and does a good job letting you relive the action of the franchise, especially the Zord battles. Awesome stuff. And the music assists well by pumping you up for some Power Rangers action. And best of all, it's easy to pick up and play, and most enjoyable when played with a friend. But unfortunately, those last two features are also the game's biggest drawbacks. Simply put, the game is easy to pick up and play, partially because it lacks depth. 
even by beat em up standards. The graphics are also nothing special, and like most beat em ups, it's just not as much fun when playing alone. But what really hurts the game more than anything else is that it's way too easy. I know that this game was made for kids, but there really isn't any challenge here, making it a bit harder to come back to. The SNES version, on the other hand, doesn't have that problem. The challenge is solid, and is a type of game that gets easier the more you play it because you know how. Because you got better. My first playthrough, in like 10 years, had me beat the game on my last life and last continue. The second run, I didn't lose a continue because I learned the strategies and got the timing down. It's that type of game. Though interestingly enough, this game may be better single player as opposed to co-op since sharing continues, health and energy can be a hindrance. But a solid team may be able to offset that, so it's on you. However, the SNES version isn't without its faults either. Clearly, as a fan, this game disappoints as a Power Rangers title, having all the show and movie content just kinda shoehorned in. Plus, a few odd design choices clash with the awesome design choices. But really, that's about it. Power Rangers on the Sega Genesis is the superior Power Rangers game when compared to other Power Rangers titles. But when you put other games into the mix as well, Power Rangers the movie on SNES is the better video game. And I know, I know, it has nothing to do with Power Rangers, and that is a shame, but that's just how it goes. I bet plenty of gamers actually missed out on this excellent title because of its name. Honestly, it makes me wonder how well it would have done if it had been released as what it was probably going to be. Who knows, it might have still had a series going on to this day. Super Ultra Mecha Commando 9 HD Redux Day 1 Edition DLC included. But alas, we shall never know. But regardless, despite of its Ranger influences, the SNES version of Power Rangers the Movie is still the better video game. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you're not too pissed off about that outcome. Personally, I didn't see it coming either. The Genesis version was always my favorite growing up. But hey, times change. But if you don't want them to change, why not go back even further and check out some of my older Power Ranger videos? Of course, I compared the Game Boy and Game Gear versions of the game, but did you also know that there was a Japanese exclusive Power Rangers title on the Famicom? I got a review of that one too, and it's um... It's something. And while you're here, or there, be sure to like and subscribe and tell me if you think the new Power Rangers movie will get a good game or not. I'm kinda worried about that. But now, as promised, enjoy seeing how the Sega Genesis Final Battle is way cooler than the real movie's battle. Warning, spoilers.